contested. Welcome everyone, Thrift Behringer here at the Columbus Lions home game. And we got a big one coming up here tonight. The Lions, who are 2-0, both wins coming up against the Amarillo Venom. And they dominated them last time by 60 points. They were up 60 to 20, just complete domination. That defensive line led by DeAndre, the Grim Reaper. I called him the boss man. Damian Daniels, the head coach, he said, nope, it's not the boss man, it's the Grim Reaper. So that's what we're going to call him, him and the rest of his defensive line, Ken Washington. They were absolutely phenomenal. And they uh, they were the reason the Lions dominated last week. Then, of course, Marcus Brooks, seven touchdowns the first week, had another six or seven the second week. He's already in double digits on the season. He leads the AIF in touchdown passes. This defense is elite. They're only giving up 21 points a game. The offense is scoring over 50. But here's the thing, though. The Lions are taking on a team in Harrisburg who has who is 1-0 in the season already. This is game number two. Uh, I was talking with many people around the league. They said Coach Bernie and this Harrisburg team is looking forward to a matchup against the standard of the AIF, Corpus Christi, and right now the Columbus Lions. So buckle up. Both teams undefeated. Harrisburg wins, they'll move in with a tie with Corpus Christi for second place. So we got some excellent football. The American Indoor Football League that just started this year, five teams, Corpus Christi. We got the Cedar Rapids Kings. We got the Amarillo Venom, the Columbus Lions, and the Corpus Christi Tritons. Harrisburg Stampede as well. Uh, and we are excited uh, to be the home for all Columbus Lions play-by-play, -play, I mean Columbus Lions games. Thrift Baron to hear your play-by-play -play announcer. Can't wait for it. I did an interview a little bit earlier, I would say about 45 to an hour ago with Coach Damian Daniels. Brandon, throw it over to that. Let's see what he has to say about this upcoming matchup against the Stampede. <laughs> All right, everyone, what's up and what's good? Thrift Barringer, the voice of the Columbus Lions with the Nighthawk, the head football coach, Coach Damian Daniels. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, sir, man. Glad to be here. All right, you got off to a great win last week, dominating performance against Amarillo. Let's talk about that real quickly. What did that mean for you to get off and get that home victory under your belt and to start the season 2-0? Well, you know, it, it was good, especially playing them that first game on the road. You know, we had a lot of things we had to clean up, so I was, I was glad that we came out and fixed our mistakes and, you know, was able to put a good one together. Yeah, it was. The, the defensive line, let's talk about that. DeAndre Brown, I call him the boss man. That guy is fantastic. Talk about that defensive line. They dominated. And talk about your leader, Marcus Brook. He's just efficient. He's got one of the best deep balls I've seen. Right, yes, sir. I mean, DeAndre Brown, we call him the Grand Reaper, actually. Okay, Grand you know, Reaper. Yeah, okay, yeah, thank yeah. you. I'll say yeah, that now. Yeah, he has been amazing this year, man. Also, well, of course, the veteran, Ken Washington. And then, and then we got a rookie, Desmond Scott, in the middle oh. that's been causing some havoc as well. So that group together, that we've been playing pretty good. All right, talk about Marcus Brooks and how what he's been for the young receivers, for the young guys. That This is the first time in arena football. He's right. been excellent. What has he meant for you? I mean, he's been everything, man, especially his leadership has been so big, especially for the young receivers. You know, he can actually go out there and call some of his own plays. So uh, that's always good to have. All right, we're live tonight, 7 p.m. on the Columbus Lions YouTube. But you don't have to watch it. You can see the replay because you need to be in person. It's Special Olympics night. They got great stuff going on all game for the Special Olympics. We, this is awesome with Lee Snow and right. yourself and everybody else for the Lions that are doing for them. 7 p.m. The tickets are affordable. Concessions are affordable. There is no reason they shouldn't come out. We had 4,000 people here last week, Coach. And we, and we need to get more this 4, week. Oh, yeah. We're trying to get another 4,000 this week. So. I'm excited about it. All right. Let's talk about the team you're playing, Harrisburg. Right. They're coming undefeated. Yep. The Stampede looked really good. I've right. seen them right. in warm-ups. What are some things that we should be looking forward, and what are things that you've been preaching to your team heading into this week's game? I mean, well, we knew Harrisburg. As soon as I saw Harrisburg was in this league, you know, I knew they were going to be a, a formidable opponent. You know, they have a historic history just like we do. So, um, you know, it's going to be a good ball game. You know, they have an athletic quarterback, so we're going to have to make sure that we contain him and make him throw the ball, and hopefully our DBs can make some plays. Yeah, and I know you stay hard on the DBs. How's that been? As now you're the overseer, I know you're like probably Coach Saban. 
you still say on those guys, don't yeah, you, Coach? It, it's, it's hard coaching the DBs, man, you know, because they just don't see things that I see. Right. You know, but I think we got a good group, and they're starting to get it, so hopefully we can have a good game tonight. 7 p.m., Harrisburg, St. Pete, the Columbus Lions, right here at the Civic Center. We're also live on the Columbus Lions YouTube channel. Coach, go get ready. Thank yes, you so much for joining us. Coach Jamie yes, and Daniels, the Nighthawk. Thank you, Coach. And make sure to tune in tonight, Columbus Lions YouTube channel, 7 p.m., or just come in person. It is going to be a fantastic night. Thrip Barringer, your voice of all Columbus Lions games. We hope to see you tonight. If not, tune in. Harrisburg, St. Pete, Columbus Lions, coming up next here. Welcome back, everybody. Thrip Barringer here, Columbus Lions. That was my pregame interview that I did with Coach Jamie and Daniels. He said this is a really good Harrisburg team to buckle up for some great action. We are nine minutes away, so if you're around the area, come to Columbus Civic Center. It's Special Olympics night. Got some great safe stuff for you, including you see we have motorcycles on the field right now as we just had the starting lineups for the Columbus Lions. So if you're not going to be coming here or you can't make it to the Civic Center, it's okay. Stay cool because it's hot outside and get ready for some high-level arena football. AIF, Lions, Stampede, coming up next. Hello there, my name is Seychelles, and what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is that punch of flavors that's unlike any other. You get the crispy tenderness of the chicken and that hint of sourness from the pickles. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, everyone, we are just about six minutes away from kickoff. We got Lions, we got Stampede here on the Columbus Lions YouTube. And the AIF YouTube. So let's talk about both these teams who are playing excellent football coming into this one. As we talked about, both teams undefeated. And the Lions, 2-0, they beat the Amarillo Venom by 40 points last week. I said 60 when I started. I, I, I meant they scored 60. For the Harrisburg Stampede, they've only played one game. They did have an exhibition last Saturday. They won that 83 to nothing. It was an exhibition game. Head coach of the 
Columbus Lions is coach Damian Daniels in his first season. And he is excited, legendary player for the Lions. For the Stampede, they have Coach Bernie. Looking at their roster, they have some good talent on the board for them. Standings coming into this one, Lions 2-0, Corpus Christi 3-0, Harrisburg 1-0, Amarillo Venom 0-3, and, and Cedar Rapids 0-2. Their one win this year came in, in the league came against Cedar Rapids. They beat the River Kings 44 to 29 back on April the 6th. Then they played the Mar Maryland Eagles exhibition game and won that 84 to nothing. So they think they have just as good a chance as anybody to dethrone the Lions here in the Lions Den. Marcus Brooks, two interceptions, 13 touchdowns. at six last week. Also has a rushing touchdown. Kimbrough, the running back, has 49 yards rushing with Joe Newman, 42 yards. Kimbrough's got a rushing touchdown. The receivers, though, Demisio Ewing has six touchdowns. Ramon DeLoach, Ramon DeLoach, five touchdowns. Jermon Fortson, three touchdowns. Ken Washington, the big defensive lineman, he also as a touchdown. Crew chief and for the referees tonight, Dana Barker. They did a great job last week and I expect it to be a great officiated game this week. So Miranda, Ramon DeLoach is inactive today. Tyson Durrell is inactive today for the Lions. James Gray is inactive, and Wayne Calwood is inactive. So no DeLoach, who's the second in the team in touchdowns, first in yards. So someone's going to have to step up, look for Fortson, look for Ewing. Jarrell is out too, so... Two of the top four receivers are out. Somebody's going to get their number called, and we're going to see who that's going to be today. And without further ado, no more talking. Time to play. Lions, blue trousers, white jerseys with the blue helmets. Stampede, blue trousers, yellow trim, blue jerseys, blue helmets. To my recollection, this is the first time either one of these teams have faced each other. Not this year, I'm talking about in their history. I may be incorrect on that, so if I am, please comment. Let's play some arena football. That one is going to be returnable from Marcus Taylor, and Taylor gets it all the way to midfield. And here comes the quarterback from Southern Oregon University. Isaac Hurd. Receivers Aaron Brown, the tight end to the near side. And motion heard. Stepping up, looking, he's going to take off and run. And this is what Coach Damian Daniels was talking about. Is heard is one of those very quick, get out of the backfield, you got to keep a spy on him type quarterbacks. His legs are almost as lethal as his arm. And just like that, that's a 10, 15 yard gain, and they're already in. Actually, that's first and goal. That's a 20-yard gain. He is fast. He is electric. And 
It looks like he's going to run this. A quarterback keep. Nowhere to go. Great job by the Grim Reaper Brown in Washington. Able to pursue him. And that's going to set up second down now. You can already see the quickness. So that defensive line is going to have its work cut out for him with someone like Isaac Hurd. And now oh, it's a free run to the quarterback for DeAndre the Brown. But there is a flag, and here is Dana Barker with the call. Here in just a moment. Penalty on the Lions there. So five yards scoot up to set up second down at the eight. Thrift Behringer here, your voice for AIF football and the Columbus Lions. 1-0 Harrisburg versus 2-0 Lions. Heard. Giving the instruction to his teammates. Heard. Another flag. Throws it up in the end zone. Good coverage there. Was looking for the tight end, Brown. Let's see what we'd have helmets already off. And here comes Dana Barker with the call. Another penalty on the defense. So they're going to start at the five now. Second and goal from the five. Heard takes the snap. Looking, looking. Fires in the back of the end zone. I don't know if he was looking for Brown there. Or for Todd Simmons from Wagner College. Third down. going to be a false start. So back them up five yards, make it third down and goal from the 10. Bad snap, and able to get on top of it. Luckily is someone from Harrisburg. This is what happened last week to Amarillo. They had so many snap problems. So fourth down, decision time. They're gonna go for it. if they were going to take the points. No one takes points in arena football. Heard on fourth down. Throws it up. Intercepted by Kyle Griswold, and he's still loose. There goes Griswold down the sideline, all the way back for a return touchdown. 
That's why they call him the shutdown corner. You better not pick on Kyle Griswold. Excellent coverage, interception, coast to coast, touchdown. Right now, they're getting to Dana Barker and his staff are trying to make sure he did not hit the padding to make sure he was out. And it looks like it's not gonna be a return for a touchdown. They are gonna say he hit the patty. Harrisburg coach wants a timeout. Now Marcus Brooks getting to work, and there's a penalty. By the way, shout out to WTVM's Jonathan Hoppy in the building, and Tyler Redmond of WRBL showing love, getting some highlights. Make sure to tune in tonight. You can see all the action with Hoppy on WTVM, and then watch it with Tyler Redmond on WRBL. After the penalty, backed him up five more yards. So it's going to be first down and 15 for Brooks. Brooks, three-step drop, wide open. Another bust in coverage, and what a move. Touchdown, Fortson. Jermon Fortson with a little juke and waltzes into the end zone, but he was wide open. Bad coverage from the stampede there, nobody guarding him. And he just goes all the way into the end zone, made one man miss, and one play, touchdown. Tell me you've heard that before when watching a Lions game. I also want to say shout out to Brandon and Abby Swobel. You'll hear me say their name as the extra point is up. Extra point is good. You want to know why this stream looks so good? The Swobels are in the building, baby. Also, shout out to Agen Hale, as you heard Brandon trying to tell me the name, and Simone Roberts. That's the team that makes this go. You're here from Simone after the game with Damian Daniels. We're going to take a quick break. Commercial, Lions up seven. You know it's more attractive than a Twin Peaks girl chucking axes with deadly precision? Yeah, me neither. Twin Peaks, eats, drinks, scenic views. Welcome back, everyone. Lions up seven to nothing. Stampede went down the field. But then had a turnover, interception, Kyle Griswold. And almost returned it, got knocked out at the 25, and then one play and a touchdown for Marcus Brooks to force it. Here's another returnable ball. 
And on his feet, bringing it out close to midfield is Marcus Taylor from Norfolk State. There is a penalty, though. And now we're going to get, we got a tumble by Debisio Ewing. And we get a flag, probably for unsportsmanlike conduct there on the Stampede. Thank you to the ownership group led by Richard Masala and Casey Smith for allowing us to be a part of this. The and obviously Thank you, Dana. You heard the penalties. And now it's first and ten for Harrisburg. And as I said, the GM, Lee Stout. So Lee Snow, Casey Smith, Richard Masala, thank y'all so much for making the Lions who they are. So now the Lions, the Sampede, were supposed to start at the 23, but because of the penalties, they're not gonna start at their own four. Men in motion. Heard. Gonna take off and run, and this is what he does. And when he's at his best, still on his feet. And finally knocked out in Lions territory. The guy is electric, and he will take off and run whenever he wants. Heard, looking, firing, caught. First down. Open there was Todd Simmons from uh, Wagner College. So back to first and goal. Two plays, and they're already at first and goal for the Stampede. Heard, waves in them in motion. And that one stepped at the line, it's gonna be intercepted. And guess who tipped it? The Grim Reaper, DeAndre Brown. He gets him, pauses up, and he knocks down another one and bring it in. It's the Coven Ware from Delta State University. Second possession in a row, the Sampede get it first and goal and turn it over. Right now we got a timeout on the field. I'm the one that did play by play. I put you that bad. They scored 75, 75 points last week and won by 48.
right, welcome back, everybody. Lions are going to set up shop right inside the 10, about the close to the 9. Brooks. Man in motion is Tramel Gooden. And that's who, nope, Ewing's the one that got the ball. And Ewing makes a couple stutter set moves and gets close to seven, right at the 15 to set up second down and about four and a half, five. Brooks, handoff, Kimbro, Kimbro, first down. They don't run it a lot, but they do keep the defense honest. And Kimbro gets the first down there. Wide open is good and caught into the end zone. Touchdown. Tramel Gooden for the touchdown. Another great pass from Brooks. Another wide open receiver and another touchdown for the Lions. Extra point is up and good. When I say Columbus, you say Lions. Columbus. Columbus. When I say Roar Lions, you say Roar. Roar Lions. Roar Lions. Roar Lions. Two bits, four bits, six bits, the dollar. Kickoff for Taylor is going to be returnable. And Taylor still on the loose. Taylor out to midfield and hit. No penalty, and they're going to start inside Lions territory at the 22. So what can her do now? They've gotten close the last couple of times, but turned it over. They're down 14, nothing here. Takes a snap, screen pass. Nothing going as Todd Simmons was the one that got sandwiched there.
Second down and nine. Hurd snap, Hurd looking, bouncing around, able to get out of the pocket. Tries to get a block in front of him and gets the first down. So that will set up again first and goal. Hurd getting close to 50, 60 yards already rushing. Guys, cat-like speed. It's hard to corral him. Time out. We'll take a timeout too. Lions up by 14 here. We'll be right back after this. I'm thirsty. Try this. Starry. It's a lemon lime soda that's crisp, clear, and so refreshing. Pro no! tip. It was a soda. Starry lemon lime soda. It's different. All right, welcome back, everybody. Lions up by 14, danger zone time now for the Harrisburg Stampede. I feel like defensively, they're having a tough time even thinking about slowing down the Lions. Lions have done whatever they wanted in two possessions they've had it. Harrisburg has moved the football. The problem is they get close to the end zone and they've had a tip pass that was in inter intercepted last possession in the first one on fourth down, one-on-one. -on -one. Kyle Griswold won that one, intercepted it. And that's where we stand, 14 nothing. And guess what, they're near the goal line again. The Lions have the bend but don't break mentality. And that's a bad snap. And it's still live. I don't know what happened there. The coach for Harrisburg wondering what happened. Did a false start. Push him back, push him back. Way back. Off sides. Was it nothing? So that they are going to say offsides, five-yard penalty. They were about to be in trouble at their own, at the Lion 20. Now they're all the way up at the six. First and five, bad snap. Picks it up, running for his life, and it's still on the ground, and he's have to hop on it. Shooting themselves in the foot. And right now, horrific snaps have led to bad plays and possessions. Nothing Hurd could do there. And we saw this last week, and I don't blame him. You're looking at the defensive line for the Lions. Ken Washington, he's six foot four. 
DeAndre Brown, six foot seven. Jatavius Ponder, six one. And it's gonna be a double pass, up, touchdown! They're gonna say, is it a forward pass though? Now they're gonna call this a forward pass. And it is an illegal forward pass. And now that's a loss of down. It was a great throw, the second throw, obviously. He's looking for Patrick Gorman. And Gorman caught it. Benjamin Smiley was the one that wasn't able to get his hand on it. But an illegal forward pass means loss of down and back him up. So to get a first down, they got to score. And they're at their own 11 yard line. So they got a long way to go. Heard. Good pass. Over to Todd Simmons. But there is a penalty. He was able to get. Five or six yards there. Illegal defense on the Lions, though, so it's going to replay third down. So now it'll be third down from the their own 16. The other bad snap, Heard still looking for the ball. One of the offensive linemen picks it up. Now it's fourth down. And that clock will go all the way down to zero. And that's the end of the first quarter. Lions up by 14 and it's fourth and a mile for the Stampede. When we come back, we'll be back after this. You know it's more attractive than a Twin Peaks girl chucking axes with deadly precision? Yeah, me neither. Twin Peaks, eats, drinks, scenic views. If RPMs raise your BPMs. If the open road is an open invitation. Then get up and go. Go turn some heads. Go turn a wrench. Go windows down. Go volume up. Go in. Go out. Go off. Napa has America's largest network of parts and care. Here to keep you firing on all cylinders. Wherever I go, I'm always keeping an eye on the power lines. In my home of Puerto Rico, Hurricane Maria showed us what can happen with a weak and outdated power grid. So I became an electrical engineer, and now I work for Georgia Power. We're investing in the latest secure technologies, and we're building the future of energy today. Our customers are counting on us for a modern and dependable power grid. And I'll be keeping an eye out to make sure they get it. Welcome back, everybody. Thrift Barringer here. And they're going to try a field goal. Close to a 65, and that's blocked. And it's going to be returnable. 
Still on his feet is Marte Sears. He's down. There is a penalty, though, on the play. So now the Lions. Penalties on the Lions there. Now the Lions are going to have to start. Because it was blocked, it was a live ball, and that's, he was tackled. Now we're on the 15, then a 10 yard penalty. That's why they're setting up where they're at now. Brooks getting the call from Coach Daniels and the offensive coordinator. And Kimbrough gets the quick handoff. Able to stay on his feet. He looked like he was tripped up there a little bit. Able to still get positive yards, set up second down. Brooks takes the snap. Looking, looking, gonna go deep. Fortson there, caught it. Jermon Fortson will go up and get it with the best of them. And that's a big time catch from him. Great throw from Brooks. So now, Lions got it. Brooks looking, corner of the end zone for Ewing and right out of the outstretched arms of his hands. So that means it will set up second down for the Lions, Marcus Brooks. Already two touchdowns today, 15 on the season. 15 touchdowns, two interceptions. Brooks waves Ewing in motion. Takes the drop, nice pass, easy touchdown as Ewing just goes right past the defender, gives a little dance. And the Lions are up 19. Make that 20 to nothing. Extra point is up. And it is right down Main Street. Brooks got three touchdowns. That's how many points the Lions are up by. 21 to nothing. We'll be back after this. Hello there. My name is Seychelle. And what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is that punch of flavors that's unlike any other. You get the crispy tenderness of the chicken and that hint of sourness from the pickles. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm thirsty. Try this. A starry. It's a lemon lime soda that's crisp, clear, and... So refreshing. Bro, no! here. It was a soda. Starry lemon lime soda. It's different. Welcome back, everybody. Thrift Behringer here. My voice cracked there. 
And right now, there has been plenty of cracks and holes in that Harris Harrisburg Stampede defense. They're down 21 to nothing. Now, Harrisburg has moved the football all three times, and all three times, something has happened that has cost them. Last possession, back-to-back -back bad snaps. The possession before that was a tipped interception, and before that was just an interception by Griswold. Kickoff underway. Another return for Taylor. Takes off, cuts up the middle, and brought down at the 22. So, twenty one to nothing here. And that pass is intercepted again. Sears still on the loose. He was trying to find there, and it was too far out in front of him. But was trying to find number 84 for Harrisburg, Andrew Schroeder. And that pass is intercepted, goes through his hands, tipped in the air, intercepted by Sears. So now the Lions will get the football at the Stampede 19. Brooks with Tremel Gooden to the near side. And Ewing caught. Down inside the goal line. Ramon, Ramon DeLoach, who was inactive, it says here on the game day roster for today, is actually playing now. I'm assuming that's him in the number seven jersey. First and goal. And a timeout, Marcus Brooks. And I, I was mistaken, by the way. Number one, that is Joel Green, the DB. Sears is the linebacker. So I apologize on that. Number one, Green with another interception. Him and Griswold locked down corners. All prone to mistakes. We're going to get it right. Promise you that. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. Actually, you know what? We'll stay here. We'll stay here. I waited too late because now we're already back in action. Brooks, and touchdown. Justin Humes, the Columbus State product, with a touchdown. Big man getting some love. And that was a pretty good catch, too, one-handed. Lions now up 27 to nothing. Brooks. 
9.38 here in the second quarter. Lions up 27 to nothing. And for the fourth time this game, we're going to see the place kicker, Ryson Richardson, for the extra point from Point University slash Georgia State. And his extra point is up and good. 28 nothing. All Lions here. We'll be back after this. You know it's more attractive than a Twin Peaks girl chucking axes with deadly precision? Yeah, me neither. Twin Peaks, eats, drinks, scenic views. I'm thirsty. Try this. Starry. It's a lemon lime soda that's crisp, clear, and so refreshing. No! Bro, chill. It was a soda. Starry lemon lime soda. It's different. Welcome back, everybody. Lions putting it on. And as good as the Lions offense is, the Lions defense, I mean, the defensive line with Brown, with Washington, I mean, those guys are unblockable. Jadavius Ponder, the linebackers, Sears and DeCoven Ware, and then those DBs and Smiley, Droll Green. Kyle Griswold, locked down corners. Phillip Russell, that defense has been lights out here these last couple weeks. And a lot of the points they gave up last week, they, they came in trash time. So this defense has been stout. Speaking of that defense, here they come again. And if you're the stampede here, what's the solution? Again, if you look at the stat line, they got plenty of yards. Just not able to capitalize being near the end zone. And look, look at the pursuit. DeCoven Ware on the tackle. There, Sears was in on it too. Benjamin Smiley. He did not bite for any of that. Gains of, gain of two yards there. Coming in now is the big defensive lineman, Ken Washington. Nope, Washington's going to come back out. He's not going to actually come in. And false start. One of the receivers for the Stampede was almost in the end zone before the ball was even snapped. Little things become big things. And when you're taking on a team like the Lions in an atmosphere like this, really good crowd here, you can't shoot yourself in the foot. You can't make turnovers. You have to play clean, sound football if you want to upset a team as talented as the Lions. You give them any ammo. Turning the ball over, this is what happens. Heard, wide open, caught. And good tackle there from Green. To not let him in the end zone, but great gain. Todd Simmons from Wagner College gets it in first and goal, but we've seen this story before in the previous three times they got this close. Turnovers. Can the Stampede finally get on the board?
Hurd looking, looking, pump fakes, tries to get outside the pocket, not able to. There is a flag. And from the way DeAndre Brown's pointing, this is probably on the stampede, maybe a hold. So there was a holding, but it was offset by the face mask of the Lions. So we're going to set up first down again from the Lions four. Heard, handoff, and is he able to get in? Nope, stopped at the one. Good tackle. Sears was the one that came and upended him. Second down now from the one. And gave that to the big guy, number 90, the fullback. Giovanni Franklin from Boise State University. How about the Broncos? Here. Heard. Snap. Fires, caught, touchdown. And caught by number 84, Andrew Schroeder. And the Stampede finally get on the board with 538 remaining and counting here in the second period. And the yell blocked that kick, and it is blocked. Ball still on the ground. And picked up, and he still got the football. And there he goes. He's going to smile. He's still on his feet, finally gets knocked out. But the Stampede do score there to cut the deficit to 22. We'll be back. Oh, they're going to retry the extra point. So, never mind. That was on the Lions. They're going to retry the extra point now. Try another extra point. Another bad snap. And thrown down to the ground by Jatavius Ponder. But we're going to see what the penalty's on. And they're going to say it's on the Lions again. They're going to retry again.
Now they're going to go for two. Hurd's going to try to do it himself. No. Washington, one-hand tackle, pushes him down. And after all that, 28-6, we're taking a media timeout. We'll be back after this. Lines up by 22. Our oldest son, Stephen, had been stationed in the Marine Corps. He came home on a visit. We hadn't seen him for so long. Stephen said, I haven't had a Chick-fil-A sandwich in over three years. It was late at night. We were closing, and the phone rings. Stephen explains his situation, and I told him to come inside, and we were going to get him whatever he would like. Stephen gobbled up that sandwich in, like, two bites. It's been a while since we've seen him. We miss him. We brought a care package for Steve. I'll take that. Hey, Jim. Working all weekend. Yeah. I'll definitely get those to you first thing Monday. Thanks, bye. <sighs> Conquer the weekend in the all new. Welcome back, everybody. Ewing's going to try to return it and gets hit. So now the Lions will get it with 3.47 left in the half. Trying to take at least a 29-point lead into the break. Brooks. Looking, looking, over the middle, Ewing caught. First down at the 20. That pass has been open all game long. He also had Deloach on the corner post, too, if he wanted. Deloach and Ewing to the near, Fortson to the far side. Kimbrough in the backfield with Brooks. Brooks waving Deloach in motion. Takes a snap, Brooks fires Ewing, caught. And quick pass down to the 15. Set up second down and short. It's a quick strike offense, but you know, if you're the Lions, you like to waste as much clock as possible, score a touchdown. The referees need a timeout. No one knows the rules better and my guy Dana Barker, and of course this crew is doing a great job so far in this one. So second down and five from the Stampede 15. Brooks fires to Loach, almost caught it, dropped it though. 
try to use that big frame to shield the defender. And catch the touchdown, dropped it, and set up third down for the Lions. Brooks, snap, Ewing, almost intercepted. Ewing was not on the same page. Brooks was telling him to keep going to the corner there. There is a flag, though. And they're going to say false start on Demesio Ewing. And Ewing's going to make them back up five yards, but they are going to replay third down. So it's third and long now. Brooks. Fortson, touchdown! One on one, you're not stopping big dog number six from Florida State. He's a mismatch nightmare. And that big frame, you better get in front of him, but it's so hard to. And that's an easy six for number six. Richardson for the extra point. They're up by 29. So San Pedro get it with 58 seconds left. The Lions have literally scored a touchdown on every possession they've had the football. And there's a one minute warning, which means we're gonna take a break. We'll be back. Lions up by 29. Refresh your senses with a kick of citrus flavor. Do the do. At first, just leaving the house was hard. But Wounded Warrior Project helps you realize it's possible to get out there. To feel a sense of camaraderie again. To find the tools to live life better. Through generous community support, we've connected warriors and their families with no-cost physical and mental health services, legislative advocacy, career assistance, and life skill training for 20 years. And we're just getting started. Hey, grab me one too. Welcome back, everybody. Lions up 35 to 6 here in the first half. On pace to score another 70 like last week. And that's going to be another return for Taylor, who gets upended, looks like by his own man, and then thrown to the ground by Ewing. Lions are just having fun out there. Sam Bede, I know they would like nothing more than to score a touchdown, get two-point conversion, and go down in the half only 21 instead of 29 here.
snap, no. Another penalty. Heard, almost intercepted. DeCoven Ware couldn't believe he didn't catch it. He still can't believe it. Right in his hands. Second down. right through the hands of number 82 as Green was all over that, gobbled it up. Patrick Gorman was the intended target. Drollwell Green said, I'll have none of that. So third down and long now. Heard. Takes a snap, looking, looking, gonna fire it deep and over the head of Todd Simmons. There, stride for stride with Benjamin Smiley and Philip Russell. Fourth down. So the Lions may have a chance to score another touchdown. And bring on the. Yep, we're going to try another field goal. Field goal attempt. Nope, that is a punt, excuse me. And Green makes a few people miss. Here comes some flags. So illegal block in the back on Ken Washington. Back them up, but that really hasn't mattered. Lions got 31 seconds left from their own 15 to make something happen right before the half. Shout out to my guy TJ Taylor. And Harold Carter here getting some pictures for the Lions. HC Ski. A lot of people that are coming and covering the Lions from around this area. Brooks going to take the snap, going to throw it to a wide open Fortson. Fortson pushing someone out, trying to stiff arm, loses his helmet though, and will be tackled at about the 17. So now it's a Lions first down. And Columbus is going to take a timeout. 21 seconds left. 
We'll take one, two. We'll be back after this. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. We're back here. Twenty-one seconds remaining. Brooks takes a snap, looking, looking, fires, almost intercepted. Deloach was not expecting it, I don't think. Good coverage there from the Stampede. Brooks, corner of the end zone, caught, touchdown. Nice fade route, beautiful pass from number 17. That is a thing of beauty, the touch on it. The Loach for another six. And the Lions are up 41 to six on the Stampede. They, they got the wave going as soon as that touchdown went down. Extra point from Richardson is right through. 42 to six, all Lions. 11 seconds remaining in the half here. We will have an interview with Coach Jamie and Daniels right before the end of the half. I mean, excuse me, right at the end of the half. So they're going to do the kickoff now with 11 seconds remaining the half. And there's the kick. Taylor going to return it again. And there goes Taylor. Oh. Gotta be careful there. Sears. No flag. Good tackle. So the Stampede will have about seven seconds, probably enough for time for maybe, maybe two. More than likely just one play. Especially how far they got to go. I don't expect them to have enough time to do that. So 
So Sam Pete will have it at the 23. Trying to get out of bounds before, oh, they're going to say a second left. So they have one play at the end zone. Looking, 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 and hit hard. And that's how the half's going to end. It's going to end with that defensive line putting a pounding on herd. Lions go in up 42 to 6. We're going to throw it down with head coach Damian Daniels and Xavier on field reporter. Our own Simone Roberts is also there as well. Throw it down to them right now. We're going to kind of just for so. Sorry about that. All right, Lions fans, I'm down here on the field with Coach. Coach, 42 to 6 at halftime. What do we think about that first half, and what do you tell the guys going into the locker room? Uh, I mean, that was a great half against a solid team, you know, but right here we got to go back in, regroup, and just make sure we come out. Score is going to be 0 0, and we got to finish. We appreciate it, Coach. Good luck, Good second half. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Xavier. We're going to go to that break. Lions. I'm going to be a little bit more uh, blunt about it. Dominated the Stampede in that half. They're up by 36. We'll be back later on after these messages. Our oldest son, Stephen, had been stationed in the Marine Corps. He came home on a visit. We hadn't seen him for so long. Stephen said, I haven't had a Chick-fil-A sandwich in over three years. It was late at night. We were closing, and the phone rings. Stephen explains his situation, and I told him to come inside, and we were going to get him whatever he would like. Stephen gobbled up that sandwich in, like, two bites. It's been a while since we've seen him. We miss him. We brought a care package for Steve. I'll take that. Jim, working all weekend, yeah. I'll definitely get those to you first thing Monday. Thanks, bye. <sighs> Conquer the weekend in the all-new Hyundai Santa Fe. Some things feel bad. Uh... Crunch feels good. Generally, you want to feel the good, <sighs> not the bad. Because the bad is bad. Good, on the other hand, is good. That's why they call it good. Woo. So to review, oh, heck. bad feels bad. Why? And good feels good. So if you want to feel good, join Crunch. Join Crunch Fitness today.
change for the better. You can talk about it, hope for it, or do something about it. It's your choice. Welcome to Max Fitness Elite. Real change for the better. Max Fitness Elite, where everybody fits in and where you'll find a friendly staff, affordable memberships, and a non-intimidating environment. Don't sit, stand, don't stop, go to Max Fitness Elite, a better health club for a better you. So don't watch, move. At first, just leaving the house was hard. But Wounded Warrior Project helps you realize it's possible to get out there. To feel a sense of camaraderie again. To find the tools to live life better. Through generous community support, we've connected warriors and their families with no-cost physical and mental health services, legislative advocacy, career assistance, and life skill training for 20 years. And we're just getting started. Hey, grab me one, too. Refresh your senses with a kick of citrus flavor. Do the do. At first, just leaving the house was hard. But Wounded Warrior Project helps you realize it's possible to get out there. To feel a sense of camaraderie again. To find the tools to live life better. Through generous community support, we've connected warriors and their families with no-cost physical and mental health services, legislative advocacy, career assistance, and life skill training for 20 years. And we're just getting started. Hey, grab me one too. No. Our oldest son, Stephen, had been stationed in the Marine Corps. He came home on a visit. We hadn't seen him for so long. Stephen said, I haven't had a Chick-fil-A sandwich in over three years. It was late at night. We were closing, and the phone rings. Stephen explains his situation, and I told him to come inside, and we were going to get him whatever he would like. Stephen gobbled up that sandwich in, like, two bites. It's been a while since we've seen him. We miss him. We brought a care package for Steve. I'll take that. Introducing Gatorade Water. Alkaline and electrolyte infused for great taste. Gatorade Water, always in motion.
Welcome back, everybody. About to start the second half. Lions up 42 to 6. Marcus Brooks was absolutely phenomenal in that first half, along with the defense, only giving up six points there as Ewing's going to get the return. Penalty, and he'll be brought down at the 10. Marcus Brooks, six touchdown passes there in the first half. Make that 19 on the season. He had 13 coming in in this game, six there. If he had another six, that put him 12 in one game. We've seen it happen before, I promise you. He had a 10 touchdown game performance last year. Ewing, DeLoach, and Gooden. Three receiver set. Brooks looking, fires, DeLoach caught. And he's going to be brought down, but first down. There is a flag. So illegal defense on the stampede. Obviously, the Lions are going to take the positive play there. Just joining us, this Harrisburg stampede in the first three possessions, they started off the, with the ball, got it all the way down to the goal line, and three straight turnovers, resulting in three straight touchdowns for the Lions. They went up 28 to nothing, just like that. Made it 28-6, and they scored two more right before the half. And Marcus Brooks is going to be sacked. Good hustle. And great sack by Yuka Onya. So a negative play there. Tam Brooks looking, firing over the middle. Ewing caught. Ewing makes a move, makes one man miss. Two more there to clean it up. But gets it close. Actually, three yards in front of the original line of scrimmage there. To set up third down and more manageable for Brooks. Fortson has it, looking, looking, over the middle, Ewing caught. He got pummeled into the padding there. So and you drop the ball, so it makes it fourth down. First down and goal for the Lions. Yeah. 
Brooks. He's going to fire. Oh, intercepted. I do not think he saw that defender there. And that is going to be an interception for Robert Harding. He was intended for Deloach. But kind of short-armed it. Don't think he saw the defender there, and that is an interception. One of the very few mistakes Marcus Brooks has made here in the first three weeks of the season. So the San Peter going to get the ball now after the interception and start at their own 20. Hurd caught. Nice pass from Hurd. Nice hands from Schroeder. Flag on the play, though. So second down and short from the one. Penalty was on the Lions, declined by the Stampede. Now another penalty. Scott was trying to take the snap for the Lions. So false start on the Stampede. Lions up by 36. Coach Damian Daniels. Saying they need to stop the music. Please comment in the YouTube channel. Let us know you're there. Hashtag Lions. Share this video. Tell a friend to tell a friend. How about a sack for Scott? Gobbling him up. Nice job by Desmond Scott. Backing him up more. Share this video to every social media you got. It takes literally 30 seconds, guys. Click share. Hashtag Columbus Lions. Get on your way. That's it. We do have a, looks like an injury timeout. And that is Hurd. That is injured right now. We hope he's okay. He's able to jog off. 
So coming in now is the backup quarterback. Who is not even on the roster that I have. I don't even have a number 11 on this roster that was given to us from the coach of the Harrisburg Stampede. So I apologize. We do not know the backup quarterback's name. It was not given to us. And take off and running. And Brown's there. Sears is there. Russell's there. And DeCoven Ware. Third down and long. And miscommunication between the running back. Oh, is there a fumble? No. But a great tackle from Scott. He didn't bite on anything there. Fourth down. And Scott with the third straight tackle for loss. There is a flag on the play, though. Fourth down. And good coverage from Russell. No flag. Lions will take over. Penalty on the Lions at a redo fourth down. And now it will be Marcus Brooks and company coming right back on the field. When you face a team as talented, well-coached as the Lions, and you're moving the football and you're in their territory, and it seems like every time the Stampede then go backwards or turn it over. You're not beating many teams like that, but you dang sure ain't beating the best team, Lions, like that. And right now, with Corpus Christi 3-0, they beat the Venom. Lions win this, they'll be 3-0. We got a collision matchup. Only thing is, they don't play each other till the end of the season. And that could be set up for some type of game. Brooks. Fires, touchdown, Lions. Gooden running right past the secondary and another beautiful touch pass from Marcus Brooks. Make that touchdown number seven for number 17. Richardson coming out for the seventh time this game.
These receivers of the Lions are unguardable. It seems like they're open every single play. And Richardson misses that one. So it's 48 6. Let's look, let's see what's coming up here in the American Indoor Football League. Lions and Harrisburg Stampede play next Saturday. The Lions are going to travel there and play in the PA Farm Show Complex. Corpus Christi and the Emerald of Venom play next Saturday at Emerald of Venom American Bank Center. So that's what's coming up next Saturday. Corpus Christi plays in an exhibition game. June 14th is that matchup, Corpus Christi versus the Lions. So circle that one. The Stampede, the Lions will face again against each other May the 25th. Another penalty. Stampede will start from the 10. Make sure to follow the Columbus Lions on social media. Keep up all things Lions. Go to visit their website as well. Top four teams from the league will make it. There's five teams. Harrisburg. And the backup quarterback is still in. Herd's out. And airmails that one to nobody. I'm wondering if we're going to see Herd again in this one. This team down 42. Picking the snap, firing it wide open is Taylor. And he's going to race to the 15-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds or hit off the padding. First down. Bad snap, and he's going to be sacked. Desmond Scott, that's got to be number two. He's still trying to pull him down. His helmet comes off. Scott with another sack. That's three in the last two possessions. Timeout, Stampede. We'll take one, two. We'll be back after this. Hello there. My name is Seychelle, and what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is that punch of flavors that's unlike any other. You get the crispy tenderness of the chicken and that hint of sourness from the pickles. Ta-da! <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. 48 to 6. Lions on top, second and long. Backup quarterback is in for the Stampede. Starter Isaac Hurd is out right now. We don't know if he comes, he's coming back. He did leave because of an injury in the previous possession. Snap, handoff, Taylor, nothing. Third down and 15, and he gets about the five. They're at the 20 now to get a first down. Harrisburg is put in the end zone once, right there at the end of the first half. Snap, looking, looking, going to take off and run for it. Brown gobbles him up with Russell. And Smiley helping in on the tackle. So the Stampede are going to go for it, obviously, here on fourth down. Snap, and he's sacked. And, nope, they're going to say incomplete. He said his arm was moving forward. His arm was moving forward. Either way, Ken Washington was all over him. He was not going to be able to get that off in time. And the Lions will get the ball back. Last two minutes here of the third quarter. Brooks fires caught the loach. The Lions were dancing their way over to the bench. That defense is giving up six points. Done a great job on this Harrisburg Stampede team. Brooks, quick pass over to the Loach, trying to get a screen. Ewing not able to get over in time, but the Loach does gain about three or four there. We're at one minute left in the third. No reason to rush if you're the Lions. Columbus. 
Takes the snap. Ewing, no. And I thought he was looking for Ewing. Brooks, though, does get sacked. And I've called his name once. Second time he's getting a sack today. Yuka Onya. I wonder if that's going to be the last play of the quarter. And it is. So through the end of three, Lions 48, Stampede 6. One more quarter to go. Drip Behringer here. We'll be back after this. You know it's more attractive than a Twin Peaks girl chucking axes with deadly precision? Yeah, me neither. Twin Peaks, eats, drinks, scenic views. If RPMs raise your BPMs, if the open road is an open invitation, then get up and go. Go turn some heads, go turn a wrench. Go windows down, go volume up. Go in, go out, go off. Napa has America's largest network of parts and care, here to keep you firing on all cylinders. Wherever I go, I'm always keeping an eye on the power lines. In my home of Puerto Rico, Hurricane Maria showed us what can happen with a weak and outdated power grid. So I became an electrical engineer, and now I work for Georgia Power. We're investing in the latest secure technologies, and we're building the future of energy today. Our customers are counting on us for a modern and dependable power grid. And I'll be keeping an eye out to make sure they get it. Hello there, my name is Seychelles, and what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is that punch of flavors that's unlike any other. You get the crispy tenderness of the chicken and that hint of sourness from the pickles. Ta-da! <laughs> and we're back, everybody. Lions on top of the Sam P by 42. And Brooks has the football. Third down and about 13, close to 14. Let me get inside the 10 for the first down. Lion, Brooks, fires, Fortson, stiff arm, tackled, but enough for the first down. Brooks, toss, sweep, walk in, touchdown, Kimbrough. Oh, and now we got a penalty. As one of the Lions players, and now we got a tussle. Nope, they're trying to get a picture made. That is definitely going to be on the Lions. Offensive lineman threw a player out of the threw, – threw the player literally out of – off the field. Bracken Smith said he had enough of it. So that penalty will be assessed after the kickoff when the Stampede get it. Now it's extra point time. Lions are up by 49. 
We'll take a break. We'll be back. Lions dominating. Quarter to go. Hello there. My name is Seychelle, and what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is that punch of flavors that's unlike any other. You get the crispy tenderness of the chicken and that hint of sourness from the pickles. Ta-da! <laughs> Welcome back to the Columbus Civic Center. The Columbus Lions trying to get victory number three on the season. And tied with Corpus Christi for first place. And Richardson's kickoff. Taylor's going to return it for the cajillion time today. And Taylor out at the 24. Now, remember, there was a penalty, so we'll see if they going to actually start even closer than they're, where they're at now. So they're going to get at the 16. Starting quarterback Isaac Hurd's back in the game, and he's going to take off and run, and he's going to get upended and slammed by Grim Reaper Brown, and now we got a penalty. The Lions are just out there bullying the stampede. They're the big bully on the block. We have the best team in the in the league. I know Corpus Christi has something to say about it. And I've watched them play. They're a really good team. So, personal foul on the stampede. Now, he actually has some words for one of the fans over there, the guy that got the penalty. But it'd be hard, it'd be hard for anybody to say that the Lions aren't the best team going right now. The number one team heading into the league. And it starts with the, the people up front, like number two, Washington, who's dancing, Brown, Scott. Those guys have made those offensive linemen go through a nightmare. And there's a bad snap, but a good pass and caught. Nice job sticking in there from Hurd. And the pass was caught for, by Nate Beamer. So there is a penalty. <laughs> Automatic first down. And because of illegal head contact, Roughing the pass <coughs> on the Lions. <laughs> Excuse me. So first down and fifth, first down, excuse me, and goal for the Stampede.
and sack Brown. And the backfield quickly. Second down from the 16. Backup quarterback's back in the game. He's going to try to take off and run and get tackled to the ground. Scott and Ponder there. Set up third down. Third down, quick pass over the hands of Taylor, incomplete. Fourth down. Intercepted. And here comes Smiley, gets taken down. Great coverage. Was looking for Taylor. Fourth down, really had nowhere to go with it. There is a penalty, though. So roughing the passer. And Coach Daniels is not happy. So they're going to replay fourth down. So we play fourth down. Fall start. And they're going to say that is on Stampede's Schroeder. So back him up five more if he fourth down from about the 16.
Fires in the back of the end zone, and Taylor went on the same page. Turnover on downs. Eight thirty-eight remaining in this one. All Lions. Brooks still in the game. There's a penalty. Brooks, incomplete pass. Fans still here in support, as they should be. Watching their Lions up by 49. The next home game for the Lions. will be May the 25th. That is the next home game for the Lions. The Lions' next game is against Cedar Rapid Kings, May the 10th. Excuse me, Harrisburg Stampede next Saturday, and then May the 10th is their game after that. And there is another touchdown. Brooks flaunting it. How about the over-the-shoulder catch from Gooden? Four touchdowns. By these receivers, man. They have just been incredible. And that is touchdown number eight for Marcus Brooks on the game. 61-6. to six. As I was saying, the Lions put this team, Harrisburg, Stampede, at Harrisburg next Saturday. And then they don't have a game till May the 10th against the Cedar Rapid Kings at the Cedar Rapid Kings. Then they have the Stampede again May the 25th here at home. And they have an exhibition game against Peach State and then Corpus Christi Tritons. And another missed extra point. Lions winning by 55. You can also listen to me. I uh, cover all things Lions on the Sports Visions radio show with DJ Jones, 4 to 6 p.m., 92.1 Smooth R&B. Tune in every Monday and Thursday, Sports Visions Facebook page. Myself and DJ Jones, you can catch us there. I also interviewed Coach Damian Daniels and Marcus Brooks, Lee Snow, Casey Smith, and the rest on the Georgia Alabama Sports Live show. You can catch on Georgia Alabama Sports Live Facebook and YouTube channel.
And here goes Taylor. Taking off, he's at a 20, 25. Finally tackled hard at the Lions 14. Another good return from Taylor. Hasn't mattered though, because Sampy can't put it in the end zone, but he's been effective in the return game. He's had to return a bunch of them too. 10 different times. Clock running, five minutes to go. We will have an interview with Coach Damian Daniels following the game. Our own Simone Roberts will be down there. Snap. Stepping up, running as the backup quarterback. And if you're just joining us, I don't have the quarterback's name. He was not on the roster that was given to me or that it put the wrong number on there. Another horrific snap. There is a flag, but a sack by the Coven Ware. See what the flag's on. First down and goal for the Stampede. Snap. Touchdown, Stampede. How about that one-handed catch? Finally, another touchdown for the Stampede. One in the first half. Here's another one in the second half. Todd Simmons, hope it's not Simons, with the touchdown catch. We have an injury. We'll take a timeout too. We'll be back after this. You know, it's more attractive than a Twin Peaks girl chucking axes with deadly precision. Yeah, me neither. Twin Peaks eats, drinks, scenic views. I'm thirsty. Try this. Starry. It's a lemon lime soda that's crisp, clear, and. So refreshing. Bro, no! here, yeah. it was a soda. Sorry, lemon lime soda. It's different.
So now, after the injury, everything looks all right. And we're gonna have an extra point now for the Stampede. Bad snap, and he's gonna be stopped short of the two-point extra version. Two minutes and 14 seconds left in this one. Wondering if Brooks is going to come out. We're going to have the backup quarterback, Joe Newman, in to finish it up. Booming kick, Ewing's gonna get a return. It's only third of the game and he gets clipped. And Brooks will come out. Could be the final time of the game, should be, for the Lions offense. Brooks waves him in motion. Gonna go deep again to Gooden. Same pass, same result. Touchdown, Lions. Same route, just as good of a pass. Better catch, touchdown. Number nine for Marcus Brooks. Gooden, five touchdowns for him. That makes 21 touchdown passes on the season for Brooks. Excuse me, 22. Lions. Beat Amarillo 47 to 26 the first game. The second time beat him 75 to 27. And they're winning this 67 to 12. The leg game on Lions, they wanted to back it up. Richardson says he doesn't like being that close. I don't blame him. Give a better angle. At the extra point attempt. One minute left here in the fourth. We will have Simone Roberts down with Coach Damian Daniels. And that one's no good. Try to do a drop kick. 
Didn't get enough leg on that one. Subscribe our, to our YouTube channel. We'll take a break, final break. Probably during regulation, Lions up by 55. I'm thirsty. Try this. Starry. It's a lemon lime soda that's crisp, clear, and so refreshing. Pro no! tip. Yeah. It was a soda. Starry lemon lime soda. It's different. Oh, baby. Come on and say it now. Just let the words go out. Gary. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. We're back. One minute left. Kickoff. Sam P will probably have it for the. I keep saying that. I, you never know. But the running clock, I would assume this would be the last possession in, in a 55 point game. And Taylor's going to return it for the 11th time. And for the 11th time, he's going to break it outside and get tackled at midfield. And here come some penalties. Blind tie block on the Sampede, back him up. Uh, 52 seconds remaining, just try to get one more score. That one's going to be batted back into the screen. Incomplete. Scott was all in the face of the backup quarterback. Snap, shovel, I don't even know what to call that. I guess he was trying to shovel pass, but shovel pass with two hands. Third down. High snap, collecting it, running for his life, and tip. Sears has got it, still on his feet, tipped by Green. Good action by both of those guys. And uh, like I said, I, mean, I thought that would have been the end of possession, but it's not the end of the game. Brooks is not coming back out on the – oh, yep, he is. I'm wondering now if you're just going to run the clock out. There's no point in trying to score here. I think the Stampede are just ready to go home, and I don't blame them.
Brooks calls a timeout. Apparently, Deloach <laughs> didn't go where he was supposed to as he's coaching him up. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. You know, it's more attractive than a Twin Peaks girl chucking axes with deadly precision. Yeah, me neither. Twin Peaks, eats, drinks, scenic views. Welcome back, everyone. Trips to the near side. Now we got Ewing and Deloach in motion. And nobody's even covering Deloach. Touchdown, Lions. So they put 75 last week, 74 this week. And they're going to win this one by 60 points. And Marcus Brooks. Gets another touchdown. That's touchdown number 10 on the game for Marcus Brooks. 10 touchdown passes. 10 touchdown passes. So now he has 23 on the season. He came into the game with 13. He almost had that in this one game alone. That was also that was pretty bad defense by the San P. They're, they're pretty checked out. I don't blame them at this point. They're going to go for two. Gooden, missed tackle. Gooden is going to score. And a two-point is good. Nice job by Gooden. There is penalty flags. Ineligible receiver means redo the two-point conversion. Delay a game on the Lions. going to fire it and it's going to be picked off but then fumbled and another flag So two points no good, and the Stampede will get it back.
And that is going to be returned by Taylor. Clock starts. Taylor's going to run it to the 20. Still on his feet. Taylor's trying to return it. Would have been one of the positive things Sam Pete can take away from this. As the clock strike zero is, at least they had good returns, but dominating is an understatement. As the Lions are going to win this one by... Nope, they are going to put one second back on the clock. They are going to put one second back on the clock. So the Stampede making get it. Touchdown here right before this one ends. Bad snap. And into the end zone. Did they get in? They're going to give them a touchdown? They are. And they do have to go for the extra point. So, San Pedro aren't going to lose by 60. Said they're going to lose by 55. I want to get the extra point, 54. And that dominating for the Lions. And extra point is good. That's it. Lions win by 54. And we're going to toss it down to Simone here in just a second. And she's going to get winning coach Damian Daniels. Next Lions home game, as I may mention, is not coming up till May the 25th against this Harrisburg team. They'll be on the road against Harrisburg and Cedar Rapids, and they finish up with Harrisburg. They play Peach State Cats in an exhibition game June the 8th, and their final game is against undefeated Corpus Christi. Circled that one June 14th. Both these teams are on a collision course for that. So we'll take a break when we come back. Oh, oh we're, never mind. We were going to throw it to break. We're going to throw it down to Simone right now. performance even better than last week. Um, this, this was actually a pretty good football team. So to come out and beat them the way we did, it, it was pretty good. Well, that's good. And what do you think was the key factors in today's success? I mean, the, the defense was dominant. <laughs> defense was very dominant tonight. And uh, offense, I mean, they did what they were supposed to do. Quarterback played a great game. Receivers played a great game. You know, it, it was a full team effort. And what do you think you guys need to improve on for the next game? Uh, well, we need to improve on cleaning up these penalties. You know, we get way too many penalties in the game. So hopefully we can clean that up and, you know, be even better. That's good. And that's a wrap. You guys have a good night. Thank you, Simone. Great job, Coach Daniels. The Nighthawks 3-0, another dominant win. Same old story. 
And we keep writing it here. I want to say thank you to Abby Swobel, Brandon Swobel, Aiden Agen Hale. I was going to get his name correct. I knew it. Simone Roberts, Lee Snow, Casey Smith, Rich Masala, Damian Daniels, Marcus Brooks, and the rest of the Columbus Lions. I want to say thank you so much for supporting. They'll be live next week. At Harrisburg, the 27th, Lions undefeated. They win this one big time. We'll see you later. Have a great night, everyone.